Making a commercial game is big. There are thousands of great games out there, so mine has to be really good to stand out and make people actually pay real money for it. In the last couple of years, I made a ton of games, so I think I'm finally capable of creating something huge. Last year, I made this game together with Ben Bonk for the Brekkies Game Jam. If you don't know this game, you should definitely watch my devlog first. You just have to click on this little eye there. I asked Ben if he wants to continue working on the game with me, but he's too busy with his own game called Slime Keeper, so I'm all by myself. Divided Dungeon is about multiple characters with different abilities escaping a dungeon. To do so, they have to support each other. This sounds like a fun little multiplayer, but it's not. You control each character at a time, a rewind, and then choose the next one. This allows for very unique and complex puzzles. Out of 1,800 Game Jam entries, it scored the 54th place. Up to date, over 10,000 people played the game. It received an overwhelming amount of positive feedback and it got even showcased by Brekkies, the man himself, as one of the best games of his jam. But we also got a lot of suggestions on how to make this game better. In this devlog, I want to fix all the problems of the Game Jam version to have a neat prototype. Let's go. Brekkies, the man, the legend, himself and a few other people criticized the controls. The only thing I would do to make the game even better is change the movement to be more precise in order to more easily maneuver around your teammates. It didn't feel precise and uh, not really nice in general. The problem was that the velocity is changed immediately. This feels very stiff and not natural. Plus, no good platformer has this type of control anyway. To fix it, I added a damping function and now the character accelerates and decelerates when you're moving. This surprisingly enough makes it feel like you have more control. The reason is that you can move in very small steps now, when you just tap in one direction. And turning is also more precise, since it doesn't happen immediately. The next thing mentioned by a lot of people is that they don't like that you can mess up your previous characters so easily and that your characters don't jump as high as before once you stand on top of them. This complaint is a tough one. Quite a few people thought that this is a bug, but it's actually a design choice. In my opinion, it's way cooler when you can interact with your previous characters and change their path. And this allows for some very unique and cool levels. Also. Do you guys really think that this character would jump as high if a freaking dwarf is standing on top of him? I couldn't. But you should always listen to the people playing the game, since you want to give them the best experience possible. In this case, though, there was only one solution to this problem. Nah. Just kidding. To be honest, this problem bothered me as well when I uploaded the game. I just had no idea how to fix this. But when I thought about massive dwarfs, I found the solution. You can increase the mass of previous characters. This way, you can still interact with them and change their path, but it's way more difficult to accidentally mess them up. And yes, uh, they can also jump higher now when you stand on top of them. Ding, da, da, ding, 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 ding. And now to the last problem. The game is difficult. And it can be very frustrating when you have to delete all the progress from the previous characters when you made a small mistake with the first one. It's even more annoying when all you have to do with Jerry in the beginning is to stand still and wait. You always had to wait until the time runs out and the rewind begins. And I had no idea how to fix this without breaking the game mechanic. When I took the shower, I thought about a story for a divided dungeon. How about Jerry found the clock that lets him rewind the past 20 seconds. So each level takes 20 seconds max. I really like that year, but what should I do with the short levels? You don't want to stand there waiting for 20 seconds for the rewind. Yep, that's uh, very boring. The answer is so simple, I don't know why I didn't think about this previously. You can rewind at any time. And this solves the problem. You can now iterate through the characters much faster to figure out how the level works. With the new 20 second rule, I redesigned most of the levels and also created a bunch of new ones. You can now play the improved prototype to see if the changes I made are any good. And most important, I spent the last weeks to make a Steam page for Divided Dungeon. So you can now start wishlisting the game, if you're interested. 
but I won't continue working on the divided engine for the next few weeks. I want to finish my other projects first. And I'm currently writing my master thesis. Once I finished university, I will work on divided dungeon full time to make it my greatest game. And to somehow manage to earn some money to not get homeless and starve. You won't believe me, but my flat and food actually costs money. For now, you can of course donate me some likes and subscriptions, uh, the only currency real YouTubers need. And write in the comments what you think about Divided Dungeon and all the cool ideas you have for the game. I hope I see you next week. Bye.